Welcome back to another episode of This is the Spawn, and we are playing Hellpoint. There's also some way of helping others, that's perfect. But this is not uh, what I kind of remembered. I remembered that I actually have uh, other equipment that I could wear. Not just those goggles here. No, 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 no. Uh, I had this one, uh, which is good against Nihil whatever damage. And yeah, that's that. And what about that one? Hmm. Okay, this one goes down by 6, the range damage thingy, and the entropy goes down by 11, but the knee heal goes up by 20. Hmm. And everything else also increases just a little bit. So is this better or is it not better? That's just a big question. Thank goodness we have the uh, requirements for it, otherwise we would be slightly screwed. Nerf torso suit, yeah, it can be used. Kind of like the opposite of the Nerf Tersal suit, except that it has slightly higher requirements. Mm. So, what about this? Nerf suit glove and this one. So, this is a bonus 10, bonus 13, and we lose uh, 8. Whereas this one is a bonus 18, and we lose 5, so it's bonus 13. Range. Yeah, it's definitely uh, good against Nihil damage. That's strange. What about the overall uh, defense here? Like this one says defense against Nihil 11. Uh, that means what? Because let's say I would just change these. Uh, the knee heal goes up to 22. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, the high defense rating was only on entropy, so 61. Okay, physical defense is 42. Mm. And let's just get another headpiece. No, this is not a good one. Let's go with that one instead. The magnifier goggles, they're good against physical. So this one is slightly better. This one is not really good against physical. It just kind of switches the overall defense values. Okay, 48. Slightly higher. This looks like we are out of the matrix or something. Uh, what about the actual Peter Human one? Nah. Nice, but I want my defenses. Even if they look kind of strange. Whoa, look at the knee heel. This one here in comparison to that one, like why Foster's mask makes absolutely no difference because we are already pale as, yeah, pale as what? Some porcelain thingamajig. So where do we, ah, nice, agree to help, not yet. And we got ourselves another nice breach. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, why not? Come on, let's just help someone. The host world is full. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm close to that thing. Uh, shouldn't I be able to write stuff down? With maybe the online fees. Post me. Yay, I can post it. Wait a minute. This means I can post a message. Um... And can I... Okay, so in order to post a message, you need to be close uh, to a wall like that. But is there also a post message key to make it quicker for me to do that? And also, toggling walk uh, was somehow deactivated. Mm, and the go to the left thing, the game remembered for some reason. So... That's not it, that's not it, that's not it. Um, now these are just menu options. Uh, change program, no. Write message or something like that, no. Okay, good. So I have to do this uh, with this setup here. Like you have to get into the taunt, why does it always go right into the taunt one, even if you wanna post a message? Oh, wait. 
There's someone. Most waters fall. Again. Just great. Damn it. So, post message. How does that work? Uh, remove apply. Let's apply one. Uh, well, let's press enter. Ah, so we get up, down, left, right. And slightly angled versions. To the left, to the right. Uh, turn right, turn left. Plus question mark, exclamation mark. Explosion, other stuff. Bony thing. Three numbers, okay. Some circles. That thing, an eye, some kind of imprint. Uh, other stuff, other stuff, other stuff. Uh, that thingy again. There are nice symbols here. Hey! Nice. Let's see if we can establish a connection here. Because the game is kind of messy when it comes to multiplayer thing. Merging with the world of robot racing. Ooh. Let's hope he's not uh, racing in this game. <laughs> like, really racing, racing. Uh, but rather exploring like a normal person. Um... Hey. Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Approve point. Greed. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's weird. Why is this dude naked? Damn, we are looking cool. The brain from a oh, Come on. Okay, so the multiplayer features of this game are not stable yet, which is, yeah, if you think about it, multiplayer features in Dark Souls games, they are kind of part of its whole appeal, right? And that is what makes them great. But let's try out this one. Most world is full, great. It's always full, this whole world, for some reason. Damn it. And place invite, post message, enter match. Nah. Yeah, this is the match code. Oh, state your intention. We can be friendly, or we cannot be friendly. Uh oh. Ah. Bollocks. All right, it's not working. Damn it. <sighs> but at least now it gets an update. Great. So, what kind of updates did this game get right now? Red healing, ghost bugs fixed. Uh huh. It's not the ghost bugs that I care much about. It's more the, uh, well, the whole multiplayer not really working as intended kind of bug. <laughs> um, which is not cool. Absolutely not cool. But yeah, if you bring a new game out like that, then of course multiplayer is. A little bit filled and your servers can't really handle that because of that multiplayer does not feel good and therefore the game might get a negative review from it uh, what you need is kind of a uh, yeah adapting server architecture for this maybe some amazon cloud or whatever uh, which grows and shrinks depending on the situation so, uh, this one says duel. Agree to duel. Yeah, the host world is full. Great. And uh, let's just quickly go into the options again because every time I exit bollocks. Uh, this was at three. Come on. There we go. Uh, because every time I exit the game, uh, there are two settings that are never really 
saved, and one of them is the previous menu. Yeah, menu options. This one, for some reason, the game doesn't want to save that. Um, and uh, the toggle sprint option. The rest gets saved. The thing you have to do in order to save this is to serialize all of those variables, uh, and maybe this one is missing. Uh, wait a minute. So, post measures, enter match, uh, place invite. No, this is not it. Let's go escape. You can only uh, close this menu there, uh, this code menu, if you are in the multiplayer or in the online section here, right? Uh, if you exited this menu here or did something else, like let's say you have enter match like that, uh, this overlays that one over that one, uh, but you can still interact with the previous window, which is that. Um, but if you do so, the other one just sticks on top of it because the the the, the active window kind of switches again. Uh, and the previous one cancels and you are going back into the game. But for some reason, you yeah, are still stuck trying to get the code right. This one probably says the host world is full. Yeah, okay. Uh, agree to you. Yeah, host world is full again. Like, this is my icon. Like, no one else put that here. It's just me. So, let's place an invite. That one. Can I also get rid of an invite? I can cancel it. Yes. Alright, so... This was our kind of excursion in the multiplayer feature of this game, which... Hey! Now we can... Ooh. And it also takes a very, very, very long while to load up. Not cool. Like, see that? Still connecting, still connecting, still connecting. That's not great. Now the question is, do you actually play on the host's PC? So is this the server? Or are you playing on a cloud server that has to be established uh, and everybody has to get the connection to that one? So your session and the uh, uh, teammate's session are getting put onto that cloud server. Whoa. I have to say this Alma Mater area is a bit. Uh... Whoa, why is this one in red? The other one was in green. Does it mean that they have different kind of damage types? But they do bleed similarly. 145 though, that's great. Good if you wanna find some axions. And this one, yeah. I always think that you can interact with it, but no. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so red ones are deadly because they have a ranged ability. And again. Okay, I kind of understand it. Uh, it shakes for a, a, a second, and after that, the beam appears. So whatever happens, do not get close to it when it shakes, or get around it, or yeah, whatever uh, alternatives do we have for this. Uh, just kill it Ooh, really, really quickly. So what about the uh, foresight influx? Nice. Where do we end up at? Can I? Not really. Whoa! Who are you? Whoa. 
That was a lot of damage. <laughs> so was this me? No, it wasn't me. It also couldn't have been a ghost. Uh, maybe this is the enemies here, but they look really similar to me, which was uh, a little unexpected. So what does this tree I can actually do? Come on, uh, is there really no hidden door here? The thing screams hidden door. Bam! An instant kill! Amazing. Okay, we got another reflex melee this time, conductor. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh... I thought this was a, a reflex range conductor, but no, there's no, nothing like that. Refined carbon, yeah. One could use it. Oh, there's another one of these. Alma Mata has the slightly more powerful enemy. Bam! Uh oh. Okay, so if I don't hit them. Bam! Ooh, not even friendly fire, I think. That's great. I just have to get close enough and it immediately kills them. That weapon is amazing. So, what about that? I would be able to jump onto those uh, trees there, but not further. How many enemies do I see? There's one here, and there's another beamy one here. Uh, no. The thing is, uh, I think that one might be more dangerous here. So let's just focus that down first. Oh no. Okay, we got it. Where did it go? Like he went... He went downstairs. And he may just come up in a few seconds. No. Oh, he fell down. I think this is what happened. So, is there a hidden wall here? So yeah, he fell down, broke probably more than just his legs, and this is the elevator that moves it up or down, if necessary. So with a bit of lucky, mm -hmm. isn't he? In? Where is he? There. Uh oh. Oh, the fact that it has no friendly fire makes this weapon much more overpowered than expected. Oh no. Two, three, and four because I like it. So let's go this way though. Uh, left seems to be safe. Oh no, not quite. Woo! Come on, explode. Nice. Another ration. Sweetie, sweetie, potato. Uh, this is not it. Like, you have to do some, some funny business in order to break walls, or was I just not lucky enough to actually come across with those? One, two, 
Ah, uh, the third hit always gets me. That's annoying. But this time uh, I got 900 something. Uh, the previous times I got 800. So something is weird. Sometimes you get more axions than other times. And I don't know why. Oh! Bam! <laughs> oh, I love that thing so much. Um. So wait a minute. I got still that. I need much more experience when it comes to this. Uh, maybe I should use the normal gun version. I think this gets you more experience than uh, throwing those grenades at enemies. And that one can only be opened from the other side. As usual. Oh, really? Okay, so you can probably jump down like that. Uh, or maybe there's a safe... No, there's not. A safe way. I have to go back to the bridge now. When I upgrade my character. The thing is, I can only get at least one level up, but not more. But I just have 900. Ugh. Ah, don't like wasting me. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Another breach synchronizer. That was totally worth it. Where do we end up if I get... Ah, behind the wall or we... Uh... What is this? Woo! A hidden wall. Yeah, look at that. Great. So, more shrooms. A boss fight. We're not doing the boss fight with too many souls because I know how the boss fight will go. I take too much damage and then I'm dead. Whoa. Oh no. Woo. And I got beamified. Oh, 10,000. More refined carbon, nice. But the thing is, refined carbon doesn't help me at all. Doom, dee dee doom, dee dee doom, dee doo dee doom. Oh, whoa! There are others, that's just mean. Ah! Oh. Nice. As I said, fighting staircases, oh no, on staircases. Yee yee yee. Woo! And attack. Bam! <laughs> I like those enemies. They are fairly easy to kill and they yield a lot of axions. Compared to the difficulty, so yeah. Easy to do. Easy fish would get you 40 something. And these give you at least 10 times as much. But they also take maybe tw twice the time to get killed. So yeah, they are more, more efficient when it comes to this. What do we got this time? An anti-red injection. Ooh, so this is another healing method, I presume. And we can upgrade that. Someone just shot, right? Yeah, I still hear one shooting. <gasps> okay. Um, it's coming from this thingy up there. I presume. Yeah, that's a boss. Slightly, slightly, slightly larger enemy. <laughs> so, uh, let's see what this uh, healing injection thingy does. Um, this is not it. Uh, it's also not here. That's the key. There we go. An anti-red injection, a solution that quickly became a necessity for humans when interacting with arisen uh, or arisen corrosive fields, will cure radiation poisoning. <gasps> nice! Or oh, the fact that it has four needles. Oh. Just so creepy. Uh, wait a minute. Does F do that too? No. Oh, come on! I held down F in order to change the uh, healing item, but uh, you have to do it this way. 
Ah, now I have to recharge it again. Right. Wait a minute. What happens if I... Okay, I got the... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So... The circle around the healing item stays the same. So yeah, the, 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 the charger... The charge state? Or... Oh. Whatever. The recharge stays the same. I don't want to lose my uh, experience here. Oi, 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 oi. Okay, it flows in a strange direction. It is homing! Okay, that one is cheaty. I will not pros progress this way. I will upgrade the character for now. Um, how much do I need? Four, five hundred. Uh, no, five, four hundred. And that means more than ten thousand. Uh, ten thousand, maybe eight hundred or something like that. But I need, I think, at least another one thousand axions just to make sure. So let's quickly go back to this bridge that we had there. And I think there was also a way to go to the left, right? So let's do this. Uh, wait a minute. Is there really no exit here? Wait, how do you... Or maybe there's a path that you can interact with. Wait a minute. I have to say that this lighting effect here on this wall looks suspicious. But yet again, everything in here looks somewhat suspicious. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Alright, we got that one. And this one. That is just strange. Instant kill. Yeah, you can instantly kill them, but they don't yield as much, as many axioms. Not really worth it. But at least they do respawn. Yeah, went this way and then up and the other way around. And this could... Nah, it's not. Yeah, this is where I started. I said that I wanted to go to the breach. <laughs> uh, just, just quickly go to the left. Oh, axioms. Wait. That one again looks suspicious, but it might just be a broken ground. Yeah, no items to be found anywhere. And what else we have? Ooh, that is strange. See if that whole thing kind of push downward. Ooh, hello there. Uh -oh. Ah, they even do this in close range. Chee hee hee hee. Bam! Oh, that damage. But this time it's uh, 450. Oh, model Entropic Railgun. <gasps> that means it's not just a normal railgun. No. Oh, wait. My second breakable wall. So breakable walls do look the same. Uh, what is this? An Omnicube Jukebox Program A. Yay. Alrighty. I have to set this up first. So this is the Omnicube, this is light, the pathing system is useless. Um, let's go with Jukebox thingy A, let's see what happens. Uh, let's go with two. That is creepy. Whoa! That is, okay, this is the best way of implementing background music in a game that I have found yet. Because usually what happens is that you... 
That is really nice. <laughs> like usually what happens is that the game always has background music of whatever kind. And... Oh, that's just too loud for a moment. Um, anyway, the game always has uh, background music, but you don't really know where it's coming from. Uh, whereas this feature here gives you a real uh, source where the music is supposed to come from. And it's the it's the cube that makes the uh, makes the music. So it's more realistic if you think about it. Uh, even if the game itself is like completely over the top, but it's 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 a really nice implementation. Like the jukeboxes in uh, Minecraft, but instead of just giving off one tone or like a series of tones and also having background music available there, they are a really nice feature. Like it's it's really nice. Oh, nerf suit leggings. Wait a minute, why do I have these things twice? Oh wait, that's a coin. Almost too difficult to see the coin when you are running around like that. Okay, wait, uh, I found a model railgun thing in the So, it's not here. Uh, it's also not here. Then I found, of course, the catalyst conductor. Equip it on a catalyst at an upgrade station to augment power based on force edge. Sure. Um, oh, wait. That's the thing. A program that emits semi random rhythmic sound waves. Their patterns can be quite enticing. Yep. Sound great. And then we have this uh, the model entropic railgun. Why does it say entropic? Uh, I need a railgun, of course. And I, yeah, I could use the one that I have at the moment. Uh, how many railguns? Yeah, I have this railgun and I have that railgun. That one has experience. Uh, this one does not have experience. So it's not that you unlock the skill for a weapon. It's more like you unlock the weapon. Like, if you, let's say you unlock a skill for a weapon, that would mean that you can use the skill on another weapon, um, or at least on another type of a similar uh, kind of weapon. Like, let's say you unlock rail, being good at a rail gun in general, that means this one uh, will increase, uh, give you additional abilities, but this one uh, would give you these abilities as well. But in this case, you don't just get the abilities down here, and these uh, upgrade conductor thingamajigs. You also... Oh, oh, that's something that I have to test. Uh, what happens if you use the railgun as a crafting uh, object and also have a conductor equipped on it? Will the game remove the conductor uh, and use the railgun as a resource? Or uh, will the conductor be ignored and just vanish as completely? Because that would be annoying. Um... Anyway, the Entropic Railgun kind of seems nice, um, but the problem is... Uh, wait, what the...? Heh. Didn't I just go this way? Wait. Yeah, I did. But I... Ah, I was looking forward, but it was in my... Uh, in the dead spot. Ooh. Okay, that means that every now and then we have to turn the camera so we don't miss this interesting feature. And something uh, similar, look at this, uh, the cube lost its light again. Mm, and why did it that? The light was there before, everything was fine, and I was just going into that menu here. And I was looking at those uh, recipes and I was going backwards again. So somehow... Um, yeah, ch changing that kind of kind of messes it up. So let's go with that. And the cube works because this is the oh look at look, look at the light. Nice. Like it slowly boots up. So let's get the light again. But no, the li th th somehow the light is broken. What is wrong with this game? How can you lose the lighting effect in here? Like, how? How? Just how? What needs to go wrong here? 
That's the thing. The elevator is offline. Okay, so this is another elevator. Sweet. Yeah, what has to go wrong for the light to not work? I just don't get it. Like, you program the cube as a... Because this is Unity. Um, you program the cube as a... Uh, as an asset. Um, uh, it's not a... Uh, was it an asset? No, it was a... Uh, it's not a recipe. Uh, it's a... Oh, there's a term for it. Mm, it's also not a scheme. Uh, it's a... Um, Ah, oh, come on, I get it, I get it. Uh, you program the... Um, uh, out and turn it into a... A, B, C, uh, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, uh, M, N, O, E. Prefab. There we go. It was a prefab. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you basically program the idea of the cube. Uh, so you have your uh, your object of the cube, uh, and you put some script on it, and the script is make a light. Um, and every time uh, the cube is active, it just makes the light. Um, maybe it only makes it at a special circumstance so let's say every time you call yeah every time you call the cube right uh yeah okay so you need a no duplicates uh script as well because let's say you um uh so you need to check for a cube that is active so if there's no cube active you make an another one um, but let's say you have this cube here, you would just change the programs, that's pretty sweet. Um, on that one uh, here as well. But yeah, you're just changing the programs on the cube, and then you would execute the program on the cube. But right here, uh, the game kind of ignores the, uh, the cone, the lighting cone for some reason, and I don't know why. Because, yeah, you would just put the script of make a light on the cube uh, and you would check if there's a cube active. Then if there's no cube active, you make the cube. Uh, or basically you, you kind of summon uh, the prefab, right? You in, in instantiate or something like that. Uh, but, and if you want to be really, really smart about it, you just have it instantiated all the time, uh, but not active. And then you just turn it active and then you uh, kind of start its summoning animation which is a shrink motion and a translation here yeah, that happens and then uh you yeah start the 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 the, the lighting right uh and you also have an attached uh rotation on it that is ah slightly delayed in comparison to the camera motion so if you go to the right, whoop, uh, yeah, it, it it always takes the, it's a, it's a, what is this? It might just be a linear motion uh, that takes the new camera angle and moves the, or rotates the thing, depending on that. Anyway, um, you take that and you summon the cube. I just call it, I just call it summon the cube, but no, you, like you activate the cube and you activate the whole script. And then you activate the uh, the light cone, but for some reason the thing is not working. Like how? What has to go wrong for this thing to not work? I just don't get it. Uh, the ring elevator is offline. Please activate the underground control. Yeah, thank you. <sighs> anyway, like programming a cube like that is really easy. Um, also, the offset of it. Like, the offset is relative to the character. See that? Uh, and similarly to the camera. What happens if you turn really fast? What happens if you turn into the other direction? Okay. So, the offset is relative to the character. And if the character rotates a little bit, right? Like that. 
uh, the cube is also a little bit delayed. And it gets the new position. The thing is, I have no idea if the cube actually hits the head every now and then. Like, if you do it really, really fast, the cube would intersect the head, as right now. Yeah, and you would kind of glitch through the cube. But this is... This is minuscule. No one really cares about that. Um, but yeah, stuff like that also happens. And you get the new position because of the character rota uh, rotation here. So if you would put the character like sideways on the wall there, uh, if you would glue the legs on it or something, uh, then the new position would also kind of be relative to the character. And then the cube takes the uh, new location and then just moves to that location. And yeah, it's a little bit delayed. This is why it's not 100% there all the time. And it's also moving. So if you would rotate the character at the same time and let's say, yeah, counterclockwise, but move the, the thing in the other direction, then the thing just gets completely messy. Anyway, we have to get somehow into the lower sections in here and activate the bloody elevator. But we need to go deeper. They're probably proceeding forward and defeating the boss. And also we have to get the uh, Axions safe by leveling up the Foresight skill. So, come on. As I said, programming this cube is really easy. <laughs> uh, hmm. The only thing that is not as easy to do is syncing up the behavior uh, of multiplayer characters. <laughs> this is a little bit more tricky because uh, I've, I actually haven't really done this before. There are some mm, uh, some 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 add-ons. Uh, I think it's Proton or whatever it's called. Uh, some multiplayer feature that you just have to load in uh, to Unity and it magically happens. It just works. <laughs> oh, it's, it's amazing what you can do actually. Don't really. You just have to program what has to happen in the game, but you don't have to understand exactly what it does, uh, because the engine just handles all of the memory stuff and whatnot. Mm. Which is good from a creative perspective, but when it comes uh, to a performance pers uh, perspective for, let's say, um, consoles, because they have a Okay, they not necessarily have to be worse, right? Because you can also make a really, really overpowered console, uh, but then the price would be so high that it would not make any financial uh, sense to sell it because the market is just too little. So you lower the specs of the console to uh, a pricing that is acceptable for the majority of consumers, and then uh, you sell the thing with the incentive to play some games or whatnot. Um, and then you have a, uh, a minimum um, spec uh, that you can program games for. And this is basically what leads to the standards of games. So if the consoles increase uh, their specs, then the games also get better and whatnot. Um, but yeah, you basic you, you try to make games uh, and save as much resources so they handle well or they play well on uh, the specified uh, system, if it is PlayStation or Xbox or whatever. Uh, and then if you would be really good, you just put some additional features, uh, graphical fidelity stuff, into the game as well that can be activated on the PC because why not? Uh, but also the interesting thing is um, there are not just better PCs, but there are also worse PCs, right? So low spec gaming, if that, if people even like that. Um, don't know why, but all right. Whoa, that increases by 300. That is a lot. And Forsyth. So yeah, low spec gaming, uh, also a thing you can do. I wouldn't really know why. Uh, but yeah, look, look at the ground here for a moment. 
the texture is just horrible. <laughs> it would make sense for a low-spec game, but this thing is just too large. It, uh, I think it's one of those smaller textures here, but just made really, really big, and this is why it looks so clunky. Uh, because when it's smaller, it actually looks quite decent. Uh, but when you put it, it's also just too deep. It doesn't even have depth to it. Um, yeah. What you would do, though, is just increase the... Uh, uh, that looks horrible. Uh, the uh, texture. Like, see that? The, the floor tiles down there, they look decent. They look nice. But then you have that kind of root sprite on top of it a completely looks like shite it's basically i think it's a small one that's just oversized for some reason like that one down here if, if it's small enough it's okay right and if you look at it from an angle it also looks okay right but if you look at it like that then you see that it <laughs> it's just disgusting looking <laughs> Uh, alrighty. Anyway, uh, let's do the boss fight though. Yeah, why not? But we do this in another episode. Ha 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 ha. Uh, until then, uh, ta ta. Like and subscribe, by the way. <laughs> oh, the thing is working again. Uh, that's weird. Why is the cube working now? That's weird. Okay, uh, I don't know why, but if you change uh, locations every now and then, the cube seems to work. Or, uh, if you interact with this uh, breach, the cube kind of gets reset. Weird. Really, really weird. Anyway. Ta-ta.